I just finished making these menu stands for a local restaurant, and you can see that the sides and bases of the stand are made out of wood, but the faces and the compartments that all the papers fit into, those are made out of clear acrylic sheet. And acrylic is really the perfect material for this sort of application. And it also comes with a bunch of specialized tools. There are cutters, scrapers, heat bending equipment, all sorts of things you can get to cut and shape acrylic to exactly what you want it to be. But if you're already a woodworker and you just want to incorporate acrylic into your woodworking, you don't want to buy a bunch of specialized stuff. You want to use the tools that you already have to work with acrylic. Hmm. Somebody should make a video about that. So, where do we start? Good question. So, acrylic is actually a fantastic material. For one thing, it's transparent, which is sort of obvious, but it's actually even more transparent than glass is. So if you need to see something through some sort of protective coating, acrylic is a really great way to go. It's very flat, and it's manufactured to very close tolerances, which makes it easy to work with. It's also surprisingly flexible. You can bend it pretty far. Obviously, only up to a point, and that was a significantly more violent rupture than I was expecting, but whatever, you get the idea. So, there's all sorts of things that you can do with it, and it's also not very expensive. I typically go with this stuff. Now, it's not very clear in this shot because it has a protective film over it. You really want to leave that on until you're done working with it. Um, I usually get the 1 8 inch thick sheet, and for the last project I did, I bought a 24 by 48 inch sheet of this stuff. I think it was $25. So that's a lot of acrylic and I was able to make a bunch of stuff out of it for not a ton of money. So that's why you should work with it. Now let's get on to how to work with it. If you're cutting acrylic, there's two things you need to remember. It's got a low melting point and it snaps if you stress it too far. So the two things you have to worry about are heat and vibration. Now when you're cutting wood, if it gets a little bit too warm, you're just going to scorch the edge. If you get too much heat buildup when you're cutting acrylic, it's going to melt and turn into a sticky mess. So you need to be using a tool where the cutter doesn't get too warm and doesn't vibrate too much. So for instance, my trusty old Black & Decker jigsaw that's honestly a monster for woodwork is terrible for acrylic. The blade has too much vibration and it builds up too much heat because it's just going back and forth in a short path and there's nowhere for the heat to dissipate. So whenever I use this on acrylic, I just get a mess. On the other hand, a bandsaw actually works pretty well. Because the blade is really long and it's rotating in a long path, there's plenty of room for the heat to dissipate. Here, I'm using a pretty standard blade, 7 TPI and a half inch wide, and it's doing a good job. Now, it's not perfect. I do have a little bit of melting along the edge, but I can scrape that off really easily, and it won't be a problem during final fit up. The bandsaw is probably my number one choice for cutting curves or doing really quick cuts where I can't be bothered to get out the table saw. You can also cut acrylic surprisingly well using hand tools. If I had to trim a small piece like this and I didn't feel like turning on a power saw, I'd grab a small fine tooth back saw like this one and just cut right through it. The quality of the cut's not bad and I didn't have to turn on a machine. So now we're outside. Because when it comes to making really clean, straight cuts in acrylic, what I like is the table saw. They make all kinds of fancy table saw blades for cutting plastic and other synthetics. But you really don't need one, especially if you're only doing occasional cuts. This is a regular, carbide-tipped combination blade, and I find it works just fine. Most of the woodworking techniques you already use with your table saw are going to work with acrylic, but some things are different. For instance, I don't recommend using the miter gauge at all. Acrylic generally is too slippery, just doesn't stay in place when you're making the cut. I never get a good straight cut when I'm cross-cutting with my miter gauge. For accurate cross-cuts on small and medium-sized pieces, I recommend a good cross-cut sled. You can set up a stop block with a clamp for making repeat cuts, and everything's just the way it is when you're doing regular woodworking. 
So this is going to sound kind of counterintuitive, but most of the cuts I make on acrylic with the table saw, I actually do everything against the rip fence, whether I'm ripping or cross-cutting. And I know that sounds weird, and I know it sounds unsafe, but it doesn't seem to be. For some reason, even when you're making a cross cut against the rip fence, the chance of kickback seems to be really small. I think it's the thinness and the flexibility of this 1 8 sheet. It just doesn't seem to bind between the fence and the blade. Also, when you're doing large cuts on sheets, cross cutting two or three feet at the same time, there's just no way to do that otherwise. Those kind of cuts, they won't fit on the cross cut sled and the miter gauge is too small to be any help. So really the only thing you can do is do them against the rip fence. Now when you're using this 1 8 sheet, a lot of the time it's actually going to be a little bit too thin to work against your fence. It might actually slide underneath, which is obviously going to be a problem. There's a really easy fix for that. I just took a piece of melamine. This was a shelf that one of my neighbors was throwing away. I cut a strip off of it so it's nice and straight. I lay that against my fence and I clamp it down. And that gives me a smooth, straight registration surface that I can put my acrylic sheet against and it's not going to slide or go anywhere. With this setup, I can make any cut that I need to and they come out smooth and straight. Now's a good time to talk about some general table saw technique. Now, with the saw and the carbide tipped blade, you're not going to have much trouble with heat buildup, so melting isn't a problem. But chipping is, especially with a blade designed for wood. It can give you a ragged edge if you're not being careful. The thing that you need to aim for is a smooth and consistent feed while you're making the cut. If you stop, heat's going to build up and you might melt the edge or peel it back a little bit. And if you go too quickly, you're going to outrun the capacity of the saw and you're going to get a chipped edge. Now the edge you get from a regular table saw isn't perfect, but it's not bad. And it's more than good enough for most projects, especially when we discuss how we're going to glue this stuff together. Now that we've cut all the pieces for our project, it's time to glue it. Now you might be thinking that you're going to use two-part epoxy. And that is actually a pretty good choice. It gives you a decent bond and it dries clear. You might also think about using super glue or cyanoacrylate CA glue. Now CA glue also gives you a pretty good bond with acrylic, but it also has a slight chemical reaction with the plastic and causes a little bit of blushing. The acrylic might turn white and get a little bit cloudy. In some applications that's okay, other times it could be a problem. But if you're really going to be working with any quantity of acrylic, what you really want to do is shell out a few dollars for a bottle of solvent cement. And this is totally different than any other glue you've probably used before. Instead of hardening in contact with the air or hardening in a chemical reaction, this is actually just a pure solvent. And what it does is it melts or dissolves the acrylic and turns it liquid just for a little while. Then the solvent evaporates and the acrylic hardens up again. So two pieces of acrylic that are in contact with one another, once the solvent hits them and then evaporates again, they actually fuse and become a single piece of plastic. It's actually just like welding, except with plastic and not metal. Now, the solvent is literally as thin as water, so it can be a little bit tricky to work with. Usually when you buy it, you get one of these little applicator bottles that's pretty much a syringe sitting on top of a flexible rubber container. Now what you're going to do is open up the solvent and you can see it's just like water inside. And what you have to do is get the solvent out of this container and into this one. A lot of people use an eyedropper or a funnel for that, but I've got an easier technique for small quantities. Squeeze a bunch of the air out of this and then just stick it in the solvent and let it go. The negative pressure that you've created there will slowly suck solvent up into the applicator until you have enough to do a couple of joints. Now, I've only got about a teaspoon of solvent down in the bottom of this, but a little bit of this stuff goes a long way, so a teaspoon is fine. Now, for applying it, there's another trick that makes things a lot easier. Turn the bottle right side up, and a whale away from your project, squeeze some of the air out. A little bit of it's going to come flying out of the nozzle, so keep it away from any acrylic sheet you have sitting around. Then with some of the air squeezed out, turn the bottle over and let go. And what's going to happen there is, again, you're creating negative pressure, and it's going to be pulling air up into the nozzle, and it's not going to let any of the solvent come out. And now you can go over to your project and lay out a nice bead of solvent on your plastic, 
in a nice, easy, controlled way. And as soon as you let go of the bottle, that negative pressure will take over again, suck air up, and keep any solvent from coming out while you're picking it up off of your acrylic piece. Now, gluing up acrylic is kind of like gluing up a woodworking project. For clamping, you're going to need some clamping blocks. I've got a bunch of different sizes here. These are just pieces of any wood. I've used oak just because it's heavy. And they're nice and square, and I've zipped off one of the corners on the table saw. Now, the reason for knocking off one of the corners is that you need a clearance space so that the adhesive doesn't touch your blocks. If it does, it'll wick into the wood and make a mess against the acrylic. To do an actual glue up here, the process is pretty simple. You take two of your pieces, you fit them together the way that you want them, you clamp on blocks, and then you apply your adhesive. Even though this solvent style of adhesive might seem really strange if you're used to using resins and two-part epoxy, it actually has a lot of benefits. One of them is that the edges of your acrylic don't need to be perfect, because the solvent is going to actually melt the edges where they go together. Little imperfections created by the table saw are actually going to get erased. Another benefit is that capillary action is going to pull that solvent in between the two pieces, and a tiny bit of glue is going to do a really large number of acrylic joints. Now, the solvent takes about 24 hours to reach full strength, but it'll be hard enough to handle and move around after just a few minutes. Once you get the basic technique down, you can add another piece and another. You can make three-dimensional objects. You can get creative with your clamping. Then you can test how good your joint is, and then test it another way. In the end, Who knows what you might make? Thanks for watching. I am your human overlord.